6 Extremely Scary Halloween True Stories Tonight, we continue the Halloween theme with some haunted and ghostly scary stories. So, grab your favorite Halloween candy, sit back, and don't be too scared to trick or treat. I was about 7 years old, my brother about 10. It was well past our bedtime when our mom woke up off the couch to put us to bed. Our dad worked construction out of town back then, so it was often just us three at the house for weeks at a time. Up the stairs, and to the immediate right, was our parents' bedroom. Going left put you in the middle of a hallway. Taking another left down that hallway led to my brother's room. The opposite end was my room, which was also across the hall from our upstairs bathroom. At either end of the hallway are windowed doors we always kept locked and rarely used. The door on my end led to a balcony overlooking our front yard, and the door on my brother's end opened to our back porch. The house kinda leans into a small hill. My brother and mom both had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I only knew this because I was always a light sleeper and they just couldn't help flushing with the door wide open. This night, however, my brother stopped on his way to his room and came back towards the bathroom. I'm gonna try to pee before I go to bed. The past few nights I've been too afraid to walk to the bathroom. I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I don't know if my mom wrote it off as my brother telling ghost stories to try to scare me, or if she was already half asleep and didn't catch it but she didn't react at all to my brother's confession. I, on the other hand, was terrified by it. The fear of seeing a ghost like that at the end of the hallway or through the windows is the reason I started running from the stairs to my bedroom at night. Years later, when I was about 18, my mom and I were having a conversation in her car about a dog we had for a very short time when I was little. We were sharing stories about Max's tendency towards destroying my shoes and other unruly behaviors when my mom blurted out, do you remember that time I opened the front door for the cops? And Max ran inside to the kitchen and started tearing open that big bag of dog food we had? This really caught me by surprise because in all the years I lived in that house, we never once called the cops. I asked her what she was talking about and she looked equally surprised as if she had just revealed something by accident. Oh, that's right. I never told you because you were too young at the time. One night I woke up hearing noises outside my window, and when I looked, I saw a man staring into my bedroom. She went on to describe how turning on the lights caused him to take off running, and how she grabbed my dad's pistol before calling the cops. I can't remember all the details I gave them when they showed up, but he was a tall white male, wearing a striped shirt and jeans, short dark hair. They said it matched the description of a man they were looking for in the area. It turns out, he had escaped from jail on a murder charge. Now I know it sounds so obvious hearing those two stories back to back, but it wasn't until a few years ago in my mid-twenties that I pieced together that my brother had unknowingly warned us about a murderer who spent multiple nights casing our home. I grew up on this island called Rendova in the Solomon Islands, which was completely isolated due to lack of modern technology. I lived with my grandmother who was considered to be able to talk to spirits. Many weird things happened when I was growing up, but this is my most vivid story I remember. We had a little farm to grow our cassava and taro, and my grandmother and I went up nearly every day to work on it and harvest food for dinner. I was only four at the time but I was my grandmother's little helper. At one point my grandmother noticed that some of our crops were missing and decided to plant our ancestral ginger there. This ginger as weird as it sounds is said to have a demon. We used to sacrifice to inside of it that protects us. She planted it there to ensure whoever was stealing our crops would get caught. One afternoon we're sitting at our leaf hut and this man comes down from the path of our little farm. He's shivering, and mind you, this is the Pacific, so it's extremely hot, and he's very disorientated. 
and my grandmother at this point realized that he was the one who stole our crops and decides to help him and hopefully he will learn his lesson. She orders me to make a fire and I start making one while she goes and gets the man to sit him next to the fire. He's still shivering next to the fire and so I get blankets and cover him, but he's still cold. My grandmother and I sit next to him and she starts talking to him but not talking to him. She says something along the lines of, it's time to come out now, leave him alone. I never forgot how the man replied. It was the most demonic low sounding voice I had heard in my life and the man replied with, I don't want to come out, he's mine now. So at this point, I'm beyond scared and my grandmother tells me to go get my uncles to come and hold him down. I go and get them and they hold the man down pulling him to the ground. My grandmother then starts doing a pulling motion just above the man's body and he starts screaming. My grandmother keeps going regardless of the man screaming and repeats the process for about half an hour. Eventually the man collapses and my grandmother says she has to go into the forest to finish the rest of the ritual. She instructs me to stay with the man till he wakes up and when he wakes up give him some stew. The man wakes up and is completely confused as to where he is. I ask him if he remembers anything and he says he remembers he was in intense pain. I send him off on his way back to his home village and my grandmother comes back a bit later with a ginger she has to plant. Nevertheless, the man learned his lesson and never stole from us again. When I was a teenager, I lived in my father's basement. He would frequently go on business trips and I would be left alone in the house for up to weeks at a time. One evening in spring, I woke up alone watching TV around 2 a.m. when I heard through the open window what sounded like two distinct sets of footsteps outside walking from around the front yard to the side and then the backyard when they stopped. It was then that I realized since all my lights were out, I couldn't see outside, but the outside could see me. I immediately panicked, shutting off my TV and lights. So now I was alone in my basement with no lights on and what I thought were two prowlers sitting on my back deck. I don't know how long I was frozen in the darkness for, but after, I didn't hear any more sounds for a while. I quietly crept upstairs to try and get a better look of my backyard. Thankfully all the lights upstairs were already off. Unfortunately, with the way the bushes and patio umbrella were set up, there was a large blind spot. I considered calling 911, but when my father inevitably found out, I would know for sure that I'd have to be forced to stay on my own while he was out of state. So I stared at that deck, waiting to see movement for at least 10 minutes, before I began convincing myself that my mind was playing tricks on me. And I decided to go out to investigate. I grabbed the closest weapon I could find, an old shepherd's axe, and went out the front door and crept around the side of my house, crouching behind a bush. I finally mustered the courage to swing the axe into the bush and shout, Hey! Nothing would happen, right? No one was there, right? And I'd have a good laugh. I'll be embarrassed though, when I realized I was just being paranoid. Instead, I immediately hear the sound of deck chairs scraping on wood and two sets of human footsteps running off in the opposite direction. My heart stopped. I felt like I blacked out for a second from the adrenaline rush. I ran back around the side of the house in the direction where I came. What was I supposed to do? There was no time to think. I made it to my front door swung open and rushed inside and then slammed it shut and stood there in the darkness practically hyperventilating. I stared out into the street, waiting to see someone leaving the property, but no one did. It was then that I realized that now I wasn't safe inside my own house, like I thought I would be. I was trapped, so I ran out the front door in the middle of the street where I could scream if I saw someone. Surely by now I could have called the cops, but I wasn't clearly thinking anymore, if I ever was. Now I was facing my house. I still didn't see anyone. So I glanced down to the street. Nothing. Then I looked right. Two male figures were walking by me, a block and a half down the street. Just as soon as I noticed them, they turned left at the T-junction on the main road and disappeared out of sight. For some reason, I ran after them 
and then when I turned the corner no one was there. They should have been there, and they could have only made it about half a block from where they were walking. They must have had a car waiting. I was 13. I was 14 at the time. I like to avoid confrontation, so I say as little as possible to offend someone or make them upset with me. At the time, I was at a stupid Halloween party that was basically for adults and young 10-year-old kids, so I was extremely bored, and my mom said I was too old to trick or treat, so I just walked along with a group of adults and young kids in costumes. At one point, this 16-year-old guy was introduced to me as being the oldest child of one of the moms in the group. You could tell by the way he talked and acted that there was something off with him. But I thought it was great that there was someone closer to my age, so I ignored it. My mom suggested we split off from the group to hang out. She's a very lenient parent, and I had a phone, so I agreed. Him and I were walking around the neighborhood, as he went door to door awkwardly asking for candy, as I stood back on the sidewalk as I couldn't ask for candy. At one point during the night, I noticed something with him was really off. He started asking me if I believed in vampires. I said yes, because I was worried what his reaction would be if I said no. His eyes lit up, and he started talking about him being a vampire and asking if I wanted to come back to his house so he could bite and suck on my neck. I nervously laughed and said, Oh no, I'm sorry, I have a boyfriend, and he wouldn't be comfortable with that. He replied with, I have a girlfriend, but she wouldn't mind. It's just sucking your neck because my fangs get sore when I don't. Just come over. I knew he lived in the neighborhood because everyone in the group did, other than my family, luckily, so I didn't know how to say no. I kept politely declining, and the sun was almost completely down so it was getting dark. I was getting scared from his persistence and being alone with him, so I started blowing up my mom's phone with calls and trying not to cry. She wasn't answering, so we wandered along the neighborhood and by the grace of God ran into the original group. I ran to my mom and hugged her while crying and being mad at her for not answering because she left her phone at the house. It may not sound that creepy, but this guy was so persistent and basically begging me to let him suck my neck when I was alone with him. This happened back when I was in high school. At the time, I worked part-time at a grocery store, and it had become tradition for a bunch of us to all go to some sort of haunt for Halloween. The first year, we went to a haunted forest, and then a haunted corn maze that began with me falling face first into a mud puddle. And this also included things like getting stuck in a shed-type building with a slew of Jason Voorhees characters, being chased by Leatherface and other funny things. It was fun. Anyways, I want to say this was our third year doing this. We were all headed to a haunted factory in a nearby city, and as this was before the advent of smartphones, we relied on printed directions. Because of the size of our group, we had to travel in three cars, and I was in the last car of the caravan with my co-workers Noel and Janie. Alas, we got lost, because the people at the head of the group were terrible at navigation, and we ended up in a rough part of the city. At one point we drove by a parking garage and I heard someone scream. Eventually our car got separated from the rest of the group at a stoplight, and by the time it turned green again we lost everyone else. We drove around for a while talking to each other on the phone, and trying to find each other. I was in the back seat talking to someone in the first car, Laura, and trying to direct my driver Noel, while Laura tried to do the same with her husband who was driving their car. It was not going well. Eventually I was just like, Noel, just pull over somewhere and let them come find us. Now, there were a lot of places Noel could have pulled over, like a Burger King or an office building parking lot, but he chose the parking lot of a shady bar. Why? I have no idea. Perhaps it was because there was a large key bank sign nearby that served as a good landmark for the others to find us. So we were waiting in this lot for the others when a line of about seven cars pulled into the bar. This wasn't so surprising because it was a Friday night, but they didn't park normally. No, they surrounded us, the front end of the cars pointing toward us, and because of their closeness, there was no space for us to drive out of there. We were trapped. For a few minutes they just stared at us from their cars, and then they all started to get out and walk toward us. 
there were at least 10 rough looking guys. And by this point I was convinced we were about to be robbed. Get your wallet out, I told Noelle and Janie as I did the same. I didn't have much money anyway to be honest, which worried me, because I wondered what they would do if it wasn't enough. I was terrified but was trying to keep calm, and Noelle seemed genuinely not worried, but I can't believe he wasn't at least somewhat concerned, especially given his car contained both a teenager, me, and his girlfriend, Janie. As for Janie, she was so scared that she was crying. The guy I presumed to be the leader reached the door first, approaching the passenger side where Janie and I were. He looked inside the car at us for a moment, and then he and his group all went back to their cars and parked normally. Well, I wasn't taking any chances, and ordered very sternly, Noel, go to the Burger King for God's sake. We eventually grouped up with everyone else and made it to the factory, which was far less scary than what we had endured. It doesn't sound scary, but it really was. I have a few theories. One, the guys got to the car and saw that we probably didn't have much to offer them, and changed their minds about mugging us. However, this seems unlikely. Two, they thought we were someone else, until they reached the car and looked inside. Definitely possible. And three, they were just messing with us. Whatever the reason, I was truly scared. And to this day, 13 years later, I regard the city with caution. This encounter took place in 2019, on Halloween. I was a sophomore in high school, not really at the age to full out party, for me anyway, and not really at the age where I wanted to sit at home with my parents all night handing out candy, because I was too old to trick or treat. That day at school a group of friends and I decided to make plans to roam around the city, wreaking havoc doing typical 16 year old Halloween stuff. It started out pretty chill. We all got ready and dressed up in our costumes. I didn't have one planned out, but I was a bit eccentric at the time, so I winged it. I wore some purple pants, a rainbow bandana, hippie style, and every other colorful accessory you can imagine, until ultimately I was a rainbow. During our first adventure we went to Target to walk around and show off all of our costumes. I remember distinctly this lady walked up to us and told us all this crazy stuff. We talked to her about how we were going to play with my Ouija board, tarot cards, pendulums and other stuff. I used to be super into the paranormal. Her mood instantly changed from friendly to scared, almost like she wanted to run away. She told us she had a twin sister and felt very strange. She told us not to mess with the unknown because her sister was psychic and she knew things. Didn't think much of the encounter with a random stranger on Halloween at Target. We did play with the Ouija board but no one got possessed nor had a creepy encounter with a demon. This is where the encounter comes into play. It was dark, we were bored. Five of us were in my small room when my parents were home. We had more of a chance getting some excitement by walking around the neighborhood on Halloween than sitting in my room playing board games. We walked around and even trick-or-treated a little bit. It was a lot of fun until we passed a large dimly lit vacant parking lot. It was vacant all but one van that was situated facing toward the street. This time, I got bad vibes as we walked by. Just as we were passing, the window rolled down. Some of us looked back and some of us kept walking. I stopped and looked back, but it was so dark that all I could see was a faint glow of a cigarette. For some reason, what she said will stick with me forever. She said in a deep, raspy voice, Hey kids, wanna come here and get some candy? I don't get a lot of kids where I'm from. Luckily I was close enough to home at this point where I could have gotten there quickly if I needed to, and that's exactly what all of us did. I'm really against judging people, but I also like to look out for myself and friends. Maybe it was an innocent old lady just wanting to hand out candy, but at that point I trusted my instincts and booked ass. The whole day and night were just weird and creepy. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Keeping with the Halloween spirit, comment below your favorite scary movie. Mine or The Evil Dead old and new. Plus, make sure you stab that like button. And if you like these Halloween stories, check out 4 True Halloween Scary Stories right here.